Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another episode of Empowering the Prophetic. We're glad you guys are with us. Um, we're really excited about what God's been doing, just the amazing presence of God that's increasing all the time. And um, I'm here, Andrew Walker, with Wendell McGowan. Um, and so Wendell, man, was God moving on Sunday? Oh man. Or what? Man, it was Boy, good. You know what I love? I love when the, when the Spirit of the Lord's moving and we've got a house of liberty and the prophetic started flowing. My goodness, man, everybody just added to, added to, added to, mm -hmm. and the whole body was edified. That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, amen. So we, we seeing some good stuff. And our school's good last night. Oh yeah, the Dunamis My School goodness. of Supernatural Ministry. We, we, we started a Dunamis School of Supernatural Ministry here. And I think, I think you can, man, I've been shocked at how well it's going it's and going how good. amazing the students are doing and how activated they're becoming in yeah. the prophetic and how, how just, it's just been incredible. It has been. No, I'm enjoying it. I can see new foundations being laid. So Amen. people's getting blessed. Yeah. Amen. So we want to finish up this week, the series we've been teaching on catching a vision for this next year for yourself. So uh, we're going to just continue with that, and hopefully you've been getting edified and starting to think about what's my vision, and, uh, you know, we talked about a vision for yourself, a vision for your family, a vision for your church, a vision for your school, and a vision in the workplace and business, and tonight we're going to cover four more, Yeah. and prayerfully it'll give you a good rounded ability to catch vision on every aspect of your life. So, Should what do you we, think? Let's read these scriptures one more time, just okay. to refresh everybody's memory. Um, we've got two scriptures that we've, we're, we're taking this from, which is uh, Proverbs twenty nine eighteen, And Wendell, you want to read it first? It says, Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. Yeah, and this is a more modern translation. The New Living Translation says, When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. What about Acts 1 8? Acts 1 8. Acts 1 8. I'll read it first. Okay, in the, go ahead. In the new living. And it says this But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Okay, and the New King Jimmy is pretty similar. It says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses witnesses to me in Jerusalem, that's your city, in Judea, that's your region or your state, in Samaria, your nation, and the uttermost ends of the earth mm. is the world. Wow. So those are progressive ways that I think that God's trying to teach us how to catch vision. We've got to get a vision for our city. Do you own your city? Mm. That's my first question. Mm. We're going to talk about getting a vision for your city. Do you own your city? Mm. How many people's in your city? You should know how many people's in your city. Mm. Uh, what we did is we just got the population. Said, Lord, we want to claim this whole city. We were from Reading uh, years ago. Now it's much bigger than it was back then. But uh, we we declared the whole city, and the city's being affected because we we prophesied that out. You need to get a vision for your city, and when you get a vision for your city, the Lord will pull up your tent pegs and extend your borders. So. Um, what do you think about that, Andrew? Yeah, it, it is true. And, um, you know, getting a vision for the city is is something you got to do. It's something you got to take to the Lord, you know. And some of us are in larger cities, like in our city, where we are, you know, in this valley. You, we're, we're a city that is, uh, I'd say, one, two, three cities all together. Yeah. And, um, but in the valley here, I mean, it's, it's you know, getting nearing three million people. That's right. And so it's a lot. There's a lot in our city. So we... We got to catch some big vision, don't we? Well, and a lot of people's get the vision. We're seeing churches in our region, mm -hmm. in our city, catch the vision that we're carrying. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty excited about uh, seeing that. You know, one of the things you get when you get a vision for your city, you'll start getting a vision to see the crime reversed in your city. Mm -hmm. And we haven't done that here, uh, at least on a corporate level, but I'm sure that down the road we will. We, we got a report of all the crime in our city in Reading. And then we sent intercessors where there were pockets of crime and started praying. And it was amazing in the next year how much the crime had dropped in those areas that we've been praying over. And I think we need to do that to measure whatever the Lord tells us, mm -hmm. even here. And you need to do it for your city. We changed the crime. 
the, the police, the governmental officials started giving us favor because they knew we were praying for them. And it's something you don't need to be uh, obnoxious about, but not be secret about either. So get a vision for your city. Right. Yeah. Amen. Um, you know, another thing too, more that's going to begin to happen more and more is as prophetic people start to come into their places of authority and places of destiny, there's going to be more prophets that God's going to send to your city officials, government people, mayors, um, the, the police chief, um, whoever it might be, city council people, uh, senators, state senators, Congress people. God's going to begin to raise up prophets to begin to influence and impact uh, the government that has been oppressing people really all over the world. And, and it's, it's really going to be the prophets that are going to begin to have influence. And I'm telling you, God's going to begin to do that. And he, he's doing it already, but it's going to happen more and more as prophetic cultures rise. And it's going to help us to, to not only get a vision, but impact the vision of the city. Yeah, well, somebody was kind of sharing with us, we need prophets for every segment of, of government, of community, and yeah. of our city. And we need to get people, you need to get a vision for your own sphere of influence to start praying over, be a voice to them. Mm -hmm. You may not have the opportunity to speak into them yet, but if you start praying, God will make room for you. The scripture says God makes room for your gift. Yeah. So we're just going to share with you to get a vision for your city. Start praying for the fire department, police department, the city government on every level. You know, uh, we all can be a little upset with the way our government's going. And if you aren't, well, help them. Well, well, anyway, uh, if you aren't, but but we've got to pray for the office, not necessarily curse everything that's going on. That's, but I, I'm telling you, when something's anti-God, I'm coming against it. I'm not going to stand still and say, well, we'll just shine that on. You can't shine on ungodly decisions. So when you get a vision, God will give you godly authority to wash over and to impact and even infiltrate some of those places eventually. Yeah, that's at right. least that's the way I look at yeah, it. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we got to speak to those things and yeah, and, and see God move on that. And we're we're seeing that in this nation. I mean, we're seeing huge things happening, um, even in our nation. Uh, well, let's save that because we're coming up on that. Yeah. So so the next thing we want to talk about. I hope we kind of covered your city. You know, you need you need to drive around your city, and, and just you know, Scripture says. The Lord gave the Israelites the land where they put their feet. Well, our feet have rubber on. Yeah. Four yeah. tires, and we can drive around. You can drive around your city and start taking dominion over your city. Yeah. So we just want to encourage you to get a vision. You may not see it right away, but you'll be surprised. The open doors that open up somewhere down the road, people yeah. will be more open. Even people in restaurants or businesses, some will get angry. You know, when the Spirit of the Lord comes, it exposes unrighteousness. So sometimes people get yeah. a little angry at first. Yeah. But if you just keep praying, you'll see God turn the tide, and things will have favor on it rather than unfavor. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're praying for favor for you. So the next level we want to talk about getting vision for is your state. Yeah. You know. Each state in our union has a different uh, strength and a different weakness. You know, now we're in Nevada. We're particularly in Las Vegas. Well, everybody equates our state with Las Vegas, Sin City. But we don't yeah. call it Sin City. We call it Save City. Come on, man. And we got a vision for this city where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Yeah, and we're seeing most of the leaders in this city are calling it Save City. Come on. And and the, the, the mindset of people, uh, I'm telling you, if we'll just stand up and prophesy the heart of the Lord over our state, we'll see a shift. And then on the northern part of our state is where our city governments are. And so the people there we're praying are circling and praying over the city governments. But we need to take our states. Mm. You know, this one, you know, uh, one thing I saw originally from California, raised there, lived most of my life there. I knew that uh, California was a state of gold, but it's also, um, you know, aligned with Nevada, which is a state of gold, but it's also a state of silver. Mm -hmm. And Scripture says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I to thee. 
And I feel like the Lord wants us to partner with Nathan. Now, it looks like California is taking a whole different direction, but just trust me, this thing's going to turn. Yeah, yeah. And it's not going to be a long time for it turns. It may look like we have no hope, but that's not true. If you'll start praying, you start taking ownership of your state, you'll start seeing God shift things, open doors, small avenues. Yeah. I've got prophetic sons that are speaking in to different governmental leaders in California. Got them here yeah. in this state. Man, we got yeah. prophets speaking in. Man, I can't believe yeah. the prophetic people that's speaking in to the government people, people who's running for office that many have never heard of, yeah. but are embracing the word of the Lord. So we want you to get a vision for your state. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, that's right on. Um, and yeah, that's good stuff. And and I, I'm you know speaking into that. I've got a meeting with one of the mayors of oh, one, right of, on. one of the three cities coming up here February third. And um, you know I'm not going to tell you which one, but you know that th this is a time for us. You know when I uh, when you get with leaders to prophesy over them, regardless of what they think or believe or uh -huh. where they're at, it doesn't matter. What is God saying about this person? What is He saying to them? And um, I know that that's going to be something that happens there in that meeting. And it's going to be great, you know. And God's just going to give us more influence as we catch a vision. What What is your vision? My vision for the church and for this city is that everybody in this city gets saved and every single person learns how to hear God and do what he says to do. That's right. That's my vision. That's why I teach that. That's why I preach that. That's why we keep doing it. And if we don't see our government leadership, it becomes a challenge, just like they tried to kill the church in this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Didn't work. Right. It didn't work. A lot of people shut down. A lot of people still haven't come back. But I'm telling you, the church is alive and well. That's right. Yeah. And God is beginning to get a courage That's and right. a spirit on the church that says we are a force to be <clears throat> reckoned with and that we're not here to push you around, but we're not going to let you push us around Amen. anymore. We are the church of the living God, and we're here yeah. to be a voice with what he's doing. I mean, it is surprising how many, how many, uh, people running for government offices here in this state are Christians and have been influenced oh, by the prophetic. I mean, we've got a couple of major uh, leaders here that we won't name it that are coming here that were just drawn in because of the word of the Lord when yeah. we gave them a yeah. word that yeah. God was yeah. going to do something. And these guys are having great breakthrough. I mean, I'm getting reports back, and it's not like you're saying, a thus saith the Lord. you gotta you got to hit them on a personal level. Right. And, and just hear the Lord and just, just encourage him yeah. to make righteous stands. So, you know, we need to take our states. See, we talk about Jerusalem, the city. Judea is our state. Mm -hmm. So we're taking those two areas. And I'm going to tell you another prophetic thing that happens. The more you get vision for each one of these dominions, the more that God will give you ground. You know, where two will agree, you'll put 10,000 to flight. But when three, 100,000. So I feel like there is a strategy right now to get yeah, vision amen. for our city and our state. Yeah, amen. Amen to that. Um, another thing that we're working on here at Dunamis too is we're, we, we are actually, we're talking right now with a, a woman who's running for state senate. Yeah. And she may be here on a Sunday with us coming up very shortly at the, toward the end of February. And just she'll join us in a message. And this is a woman, this is a woman running for state senate that prophesies knows the word of the Lord. I mean, this is a woman who's been to the Bethel school. I mean, this is a person. This uh -huh. is this is not uh your look, these are kingdom people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to get kingdom people in places of authority. That's the deal. Now tell you something about kingdom people. Every kingdom person is a prophetic person that hears God and knows how to move in that. And, and wouldn't that be great to have prophets, people who know how to prophesy and hear the word of the Lord in all these different areas. That would be really awesome to set prophets in those places. However, um, not all of them will be that. There will be people that are leaders, you know, and that, that's who they are. And they'll, they'll lead and they'll, they'll have prophets trusting them to hear the word of the Lord and to minister and to take their counsel when yeah. things get tough. Well, just as a side note, you know, we're talking about city and state. You know, when we first started, didn't have any connection with any political people. And there was a lot of prophetic words. I, I may have spoke that to you, and others have spoke that. Then all of a sudden, you started having encounters with these political people. Mm -hmm. And now we've got substance to us. We've got, we got a couple of real influential politicians that are here in our church. And then he says he's going to meet with, with a, a leader of, of a city 
and then another lady. It, it's kind of interesting that these leaders are coming in that have had preparation and they're not religious. Right. Yeah. But right. but but they value the word of the Lord. And so, you know, when you're getting vision, you gotta know that the prophetic is what's gonna give you dominion over these things. So the next thing, uh, you know, and these state leaders that were influenced are gonna have influence to the nation, and that's the next level. Yeah, right. You need to get vision for us for the nation. Now, mm -hmm. God help us. We know that there's something happening in our nation. Oh man. We've seen what our nation looks like when we're turned over to an unrighteous, ungodly ideology. Right. And I don't care who the leader is. This nation was never made to be socialist, Marxist, right. or communist. Come on, man. It was made to be a free nation. And it's God raising up the prophetic voices now to say, thus, that's enough not on my watch. Mm -hmm. We're going to take right. this thing back. Yeah. You're not taking it. A lot of leaders in churches are sitting on their hands. You better challenge them to start taking a position. You know, we've got all this old teaching, separation of church and state. You know, that was never a law given to the church. Right. It was given to government to not tell the church what to do and what they can say. And what have we seen in this pandemic? I'm getting a little passionate about yeah, this. Right. It irritates me that the church has bought in and let them tell us. Now, we respected what was going on when the pandemic started here, when they said you need to shut everything down, don't have corporate meetings, because we didn't know what to expect. We didn't do it because there was a tyrant telling us. We did it because we thought there was a sense of health involved. But as soon as our president at the time said, you need to start meeting in Easter, we started meeting on Easter we didn't, and, and we started to get a new administration in, but we've been meeting on Easter and every Sunday since, and we've been growing, growing, growing. Yeah. And the truth is, a lot of people got the disease, but they got over it. Amen. And a lot of people have been afraid and went somewhere else and wouldn't come back. You know what? We love them. We bless them. But we got to have people who's going to hear the voice of the Lord, and everybody that's coming into us Amen. are people that's learning to hear the voice. Yeah. It's funny the people that's never heard the voice of the Lord, and they only can show up here one or two Sundays, and they'll start hearing the voice of the Lord. That's, right. that's exciting. Yeah, Amen. that is exciting. We're not going to have a bunch of politicians. We got to go beg. Oh, what can we do? <laughs> no, we heard the Lord say, "He's our help. Yeah. He's our strength. Yeah. He's our provision. Right. He knows the hairs on our head." If you got some, yeah, that's right. But Amen. but. <laughs> But the problem is, is that we have got to stand up. And so our nation's going to be influenced on this next election. I mean, you can look at all, you can see the the the, the things are cracking right now. We've yeah. got a lot in one party are kind of looking for the caves. They're looking <laughs> yeah, for they places are. to hide. Yeah, they are. Now, you know, nothing's done till it's over but but and i'm not going to presume on anything presumption is the highest form of ignorance right but the truth of it is it looks like god's going to set something up that people's going to take ownership and have a voice in what's going on nationally Amen. so you need to pray over our nation pray for the lead we need to pray for a president i don't like anything he stands for ideology ide ideologically but I, 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 I got a heart for him as a man who needs a real encounter with Jesus. That's right. He needs an encounter with Jesus. He may be of a, another uh, denomination, but he's never encountered the living voice of God Almighty. Amen. And right. what we're trying to stir you up to get vision for is to know your voice will not fall to the ground. Amen. It'll be an echo that'll go from one mountain to the next. We talk about the seven mountains. Yeah, right. Well, your voice is going to hit seven mountains. We're going to take our nation back, too. I got two passions. Amen. That one. I think that's awesome. I, I, I just agree with everything that you just said. I mean, I'm with you 100% on that. Why don't we save this one for next time? Because I think we can Are we really out of time? Go okay. Yeah, I think All we right. can really go somewhere with this one. All right. Uh, but anyway, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Listen, catch a vision for your city, for your state, and for your nation. Say, God, how and what should I be doing in this time and season? And God's going to give it to you. When I want you to close this out. We, we just speak blessing to you. We pray Amen. for a clarity of your mind, clarity of your heart. Thank you. Lord. And I pray that you keep things simple. Keep your Jesus vision name. simple. And everything we've been covering, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And then keep going to the Lord with it until you begin Amen. to see things happen. Amen. So I'm praying for healing, favor, blessing, and financial breakthrough. Jesus, for everybody who Jesus. watches this, this yeah. telecast, 
Be blessed in Jesus' <laughs> Amen. name. We love Amen. you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.